Hello and welcome back to a new video. Uh, welcome to the Pages and Pearls YouTube channel if you haven't been here before or welcome back here. I talk all about my creative outlets, mostly knitting, sometimes writing, um, and I also like to talk about books and just life uh, in New York City. I am Hannah, I'm from Germany, but I'm currently living in New York City. And today I have a classic knitting podcast episode for you. So. Get comfortable, grab your knitting project, your cup of tea, whatever you want to do while watching this, and let's get started. Alright, it's been a minute since I uploaded a knitting podcast last. It's now the 10th of August, I believe. I'm a bit confused with dates at the moment because I am I finished teaching for the summer. I was working in a pre-college program uh, that I also did a little blog about, uh, that's the last video I uploaded and now I have time off and I feel like I'm a student again um, and having summer holidays, I haven't had those uh, in a while, or well, I had summer holidays but I would travel then and now I'm just kind of at home and I have this in-between period to myself, so because I'm not really working right now, I don't have a very good overview of dates, but I think it's the middle of August. The last time I filmed an episode <clears throat> was somewhere in the beginning of July, I believe. So I have a few things to update you on. Um, and yeah, uh, we're gonna start with finished objects. And the first one that I wanna talk about is the one that I'm wearing. This is the Lotus Petal Top by Iris Hordich, who is H. Iris Makes on Instagram. Um, and she had this really cool summer top knit along running that included all of her summer top designs and I picked this t-shirt that I wanted to make. You cannot see much of it right now uh, as I'm sitting, so I'm gonna stand up. Um, the main cool feature of this t-shirt is this lace edge, um, bottom edge. That I absolutely love so you can see it here I'm gonna sit down again so you can see me again but I'm gonna insert some pictures um so this lace bottom edge that is super cool the garment is constructed bottom up so you basically jump right into this uh, lace edge for several rows and then at some point you start just knitting stocking it in the round until you split for the sleeves up here uh, it's a bottom-up construction, which of course always makes it a bit harder to estimate how long you want to have it. But I've knit several, I think by now I've almost knit more bottom-up constructions than top-down, because somehow the patterns that I gravitate to seem to be often also bottom-up. Um, and I have, I feel like if you've made one, you kind of start to be able to estimate a bit better uh, how long it's supposed to be, and it always is super helpful if you have some sort of reference piece in your wardrobe, maybe like a blouse or a shirt that has a right kind of crop length um, against which you can measure your, your piece. So I didn't modify the length of this t-shirt before splitting for the sleeves um, and it turned out to be at a very very good length that hits uh, right below the top of my shorts or high-waisted pants um, so that I'm just gonna get up again for a brief so you don't have like any exposed sort of skin here um, I'm not a huge fan of like really cropped tops and uh, showing off my belly but uh, yeah it's still cropped that I don't have to tuck it in and that I can show off the beautiful edge um, it's a fairly once you get the hang of the lace uh, it's pretty straightforward I would say and um, to me, my major accomplishment was that at some point I messed up uh, a stitch in the lace and I was able to rip back just a few stitches in that, like just a few rows in that particular stitch and fix it. So that was uh, a good um, accomplishment for me to realize that I understood the lace pattern in a way that I could fix it without having to rip back all the way. Um, but yeah, I think, so this was the very first time I knit uh, lace in my life actually uh, and I got the hang of it pretty quickly so it's not super complicated it's not charted because it's a very um, easy repeat um, so I, if you're curious about lace knitting if you want to give it a try but don't want to commit to a full garment this one is I think a very good one to start now when it comes to the yarn it you can see that it's a slightly variegated yarn so I have I think I have more left but this is the one that I found this 
yarn is Olivia and Oliver Fibers Merino Fingering and the colorway is Pixie and it has these really beautiful watercolor almost pastel shades of um, some kind of lilac lavender uh, like a very pale green some yellows and peach let's pick it up again so you can see it how it is knit up so it's a very soft variegation that i really really like because it still makes this t-shirt very easy to pair with things but it's still kind of a special um, yarn and I'm pretty happy with the yarn choice for this t-shirt because it does have a lot of stockinette so I can also show off the special yarn um, and it doesn't get lost in too much lace or too much pattern work. I had a total of 200 grams of the fingering weight and I have some left over so yeah it just takes uh, under 200 grams of fingering weight and I knit the size 5 which gives me about three centimeters of positive ease. Um, there are a lot of sizes included in the pattern and because the pattern is not meant to have a lot of positive ease, uh, I'm, yeah, I also appreciated that it's not this type of pattern where you have steps of maybe like 10 centimeters between the different sizes, but it's much closer space so you can find something that is very close to your actual bust circumference. The top is mostly knit on 3.5 millimeter needles, so it is a quite small gauge project. Um, and it's weird for me to say how long it took me because I did a big part of the t-shirt. I would say up to like below the armholes and then this front panel and this front panel. I did that within two and a half weeks um, because I was knitting pretty quickly on it. This was back in May um, because I had tickets to see Taylor Swift here in New York and I was thinking that maybe I could wear this t-shirt but uh, I was also finishing my thesis at the time so in the end I didn't finish it on time to wear it and then after the concert we went on holiday for a while and it got really hot here in New York City and because this is merino fingering weight I kind of lost steam a little bit with finishing it because I knew it was going to be a bit too warm by the time I wrapped it up. So I finished it um, about a month ago, but as I said, with a fairly large break in between and I haven't really worn it since because of the weather. I wore it once last week because we traveled to Maine for a few days and in Maine the weather was much more pleasant. Uh, at night it actually got cold enough to wear long trousers and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, the weather was just much more appropriate to wear a merino t-shirt, even though it's fingering weight, obviously it's still much warmer fabric-wise. So, uh, yeah, I'm a bit sad that I finished it this late because it's, for me, also not a super autumnal piece, but I'm hoping that I'll get somewhere out of this in September when we get a little bit more uh, intermediate temperatures again. And also today is not such an extremely hot day. I think it's also meant to rain later on. So maybe I'll just keep wearing this because actually at the moment it's it's pretty nice. But yeah, the only reason, again, the only reason I haven't worn this was because of weather appropriateness. I do find it very comfortable. I'm very happy with the fit and I like uh, to just pair it with some simple shorts. Um, I knit this pretty much to pattern with the exception that I shortened the rib on the arms and on the collar by about half an inch um, and I also lengthened the section from under the arms to the shoulder because on Ravelry in some of the project pages I had read that people thought that it was a little bit tight under the arms or kind of hitting very tight under the arms and I wanted to avoid that so I just added about an inch um, in the front and back panel uh, before um, binding off the shoulders. I just did a Kitchener, like I kept the, the front and the back panel on the needles and then just Kitchener stitched them together here, bound off at the back and then Kitchener stitched here as well. Uh, still have to do a three needle winder off at some point. Um, but this was just, I'm kind of used to Kitchener stitching because of the sock tips that I, um, that you also finish like that. So yeah. So that's, I think, almost all I have to say about this top. Again, I really like it. I also found the pattern very clear. And the nice thing of this knit along is that now I have some discounts for future patterns of the designer and there are definitely several summer designs that I'm very curious uh, about knitting, also a very pretty bralette 
And I believe uh, Iris is also coming out with a cardigan pattern at some point this autumn. I, I saw the test call um, earlier this summer and it's a really, really pretty, very simple, classy v-neck cardigan um, that I really want to make. I think she uses some, maybe even just knitting for all of merino and um, mohair. But it looks such like like a piece that I would I saw and I was like, well, actually, this looks like something I would have in my wardrobe. So I really want to make it. So I'm waiting for a bit to use my discount because I really want to um, purchase that pattern. But yeah, check out her website, check out her Ravelry, because I think she has very, very pretty patterns. Now, the next finished object I want to talk about is something that you've seen me wear if you watched my summer top pattern video and that is the Galax tank just a bit crumpled up now because it was in my wardrobe the Galax tank by uh, Andrea Gon who is also on YouTube um, I will link her channel down below if you want to give her a watch and see what new patterns she is planning or coming out with and um, I'll just give you a bit of a close-up of this pattern so you can see this is a tank top with a v-neck and um, it's reversible, it's the same front and the back. And it has this absolutely gorgeous lace panel in the front. It is made, so these are, I think, Estonian nuts. Um, you may create them all along the front and also all along the back. But then for the rest, this is just a very simple stockinette in the round, except for the lace panels. Uh, this top is uh, knit in, in my case, knitting for olive pure silk in the colorway putty. It's this very pretty off-white shade. Um, and... It's a very tiny needle project, so I think in the pattern it suggests to use 3.25 millimeter needles because, oh, I, I test knitted this, should have said that. I test knitted this, it was my first test knit and it was a very enjoyable experience, but because of the test knit I took my sweet time with uh, gauge swatching and figuring out to get the right gauge and actually um, I had to go down to a 2.75 millimeter, so a US 2 needle, um, to get the gauge for this one which is small, so it took it took a while. I mean, it's a pretty cropped top, um, and it's a summer top, so obviously you don't have to knit arm, like sleeves, and there's also not a lot of fabric here in the front, like for the collar that you have to knit, but still, um, it's really tiny gauge. So I knit this in size three, which gives me about two inches of negative ease, but with the silk, I feel like it's anyways uh, stretching out a bit because the silk itself doesn't have so much memory. So it doesn't feel like that it stretches, um, that it, yeah, that it has to stretch over my body very much. So it's still very comfortable. And because of the cropped fit, it's also this kind of like slightly boxy cropped uh, fit that I like. Um, and it has, I can show you this also in more detail, it has this nice I-cord finishing all along the collar and the armholes and also the bottom edge. And let me tell you, this I-cord was a bit of a marathon um, because it was a test knit and because it took me quite some time to find the right gauge, I was running a little bit behind my intended timeline. I did finish this on time, but that took a bit of a I-cord marathon on the last weekend before the test knit finished. Um, I like knitting I-cord, but on these super tiny needles, uh, it was a little bit challenging sometimes. So because I went down one needle size for the I-cord, I knitted on a US 1, so that's a 2.25 millimeter needle. And the 2.25 millimeter needles I have is either my small 9 inch circumference uh, bamboo sock needle, or also a metal needle that I use. Um, on magic loop and the silk was very slippery on the metal needles it was really not pleasant to knit the eye cord on that so i used the very small circumference needle which sometimes was a bit fiddly but it all worked out um again overall i enjoy knitting eye cord it was just um 
a bit much in a short time frame, but it was it definitely pays off. I really like how it the finished look is. Um, as to modifications, I knit this according to pattern except for the length. So the original pattern for my size uh, had fewer repeats of this lace um, panel and I added two extra pattern repeats to uh, get to a length that I would be able to pair more nicely with my wardrobe. I have a white blouse that is made out of cotton that has a different shape but it has just the right length for me to knit it with shorts so what I did was to measure the um, amount of centimeters under the arms from that blouse uh, and then compare it as I was making my way up um, to see if the length of this was good. So yeah, also didn't say this before, but this is a bottom-up construction. So again, you jump pretty much straight away into the lace panel. Um, and yeah, again, it helps if you have a reference piece or otherwise if you can sort of hold it up to your body to figure out uh, at which point you want to split for the sleeves and for the, um, like the valley of the V. So I would definitely knit this again in the future, maybe next summer in a more vibrant color. What I would do probably is to bind off or like decrease fewer stitches uh, before the straps and make the straps a little bit wider. Um, I don't know if it was because of the I -cord, the way I made the I-cord um, or picked up stitches for the I-cord or what happened, but I find that um, for me they are... I would like to have them a tiny bit wider to cover my bra straps more comfortably. It's okay, I don't show bra straps very often um, if I wear this, but I think just for, if I would do it again, I would uh, add a few more stitches here or yeah, leave a few more stitches on the needles, but that's a very easy modification. Um, and yeah, for the rest, I really enjoyed this pattern. I would definitely recommend making it. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to potentially make this again. The yarn that I used, as I said, was knitting for all of pure silk. The pattern suggested to have three balls of yarn for the size that I knit, uh, and I was happy to have had those. Um, so even though this one, the top, the finished top weighs just under 100 grams, I think about 96 grams, so I could have made it with two balls of yarn, but because I used up some yarn for the gauge swatches before, uh, it took me about 106 grams, so I just dipped into the last ball. Of course, you can. Um, I could have unraveled the gauge swatches that I made. Uh, I did make them in a way so that I could reuse them, but this was just more comfortable to knit. Um, yes, so it was just more comfortable to know that I had a lot of yarn left so that I could just um, not worry about playing yarn chicken. But if you're knitting a size 3 and you are very, either you don't make gauge swatches anyways, or be, if you're very smart with your gauge swatch, you might get away with just using two balls of yarn with this. I'm not challenging you to play yarn chicken, but I'm just thinking if you have yarn left in your stash and you don't know what to do with it and you want to knit a pretty summer top, then that might be an idea. Um, yeah, so that's my second and final finished object for this episode. I will jump into my works in progress, uh, some of which you have seen before, some of which you haven't. The first one I want to talk about is, I have again <laughs> my basket <laughs> here, and the first, uh, to get it out, so the first Work in progress I want to talk about is in this project bag and I have shown you a tiny tiny piece of it before in, a, in my previous episode and now I got much further and I am talking about the Cottage Cardigan by Jacqueline Seaslack. This is where I'm at right now. This is a raglan cardigan Last time I had, I think, just this part of the collar 
because it's constructed by um, making a sort of the neck part of the collar first and then picking up stitches from there. Um, and then you just increase the raglan. This, I am knitting this with Pearl Soho Linen Quill in the colorway Butterscotch Yellow. This is what it looks like caked up. It's a very nice, um, almost orangey yellow that um, I started to cast this on uh, in July because it's a very lightweight cardigan and also because I thought this would be perfect because then I can I can still wear it looking like a sunflower at the end of August if I finish it uh, but then it also transitions super well into autumn because it has this nicely golden apple cider hue um, that also fits very well with sort of yeah autumn colors. The butters, the the Pearl Soho Linen Quill is a blend of 50% fine highland wool, 35% alpaca and 15% linen. This is the label. Um, and you can see like little bits of linen poking, poking out here. And I love the yarn because it has this super nice uh, slight um, yeah, depth or variability to it because of the different fibers and how they take up the color so it doesn't look too uniform. Um, and it's also super, super pleasant on the hands. So I was knitting the silk top before, which is obviously a very dry fiber, um, not stretchy, didn't really hurt my hands, but is definitely different to work with than anything wooly. And it was really, really pleasant to come back to this in between or afterwards because it has more bounce to it. It's so thin, you don't even see it. So it has more bounce to it, um, more squish. And it's really nice to work on something that is not um, extremely tiny gauge. So this cardigan is knit on, I'm knitting it on four millimeter needles as per the suggested needle size. It creates quite a loose or open gauge. I'm gonna show it a bit closer, but I I really like it. So it's not it's not absolutely see through, but it creates this very lightweight fabric, which I think is perfect for transitioning weather and also for the summer here, um, because I often have to carry around some sort of long sleeve item with me to wear inside. If I go to the library, for example, it's so heavily air conditioned that I really cannot sit inside with my, yeah, kind of outdoors, like outside summery clothes that are tank tops and shorts because I would freeze to death in there. So it's nice to have something lightweight that I can just pack up in my backpack um, and carry around with me so I don't freeze. And this I think is very good for it because it's not a very thick wool, not a thick yarn, not a thick fabric. Um, but still warming enough. The good thing, because it's such a loose open gauge, I mean, again, it's not really that open, right? But it's, I think it's just, it just makes, um, takes advantage of the fact that the linen quill is a little bit fuzzy because of the alpaca content um, and that it kind of fills up the gaps very nicely uh, if you knit it on these larger needles. And the advantage to this is that it actually doesn't use very much yarn. So I just started, I think maybe like 10, 15 rows ago, I just started with the second yarn ball and I basically knit the yoke just with one ball of yarn. I still have a third one. Um, and yeah, in the next episode, whenever, or hopefully by the next episode, I will have finished this, I'll be able to tell you how much I used in total, but I don't think this is a very yarn hungry project. So that's also kind of nice because um, you don't need to buy so much uh, yarn for it. But yeah, I'm really happy with it so far. I will put it on just so you see how it looks like so far. Um, so oh, it's a bit tight under the arms now with the, with the stitches I picked up and this is really warm right now. So I have to take it off soon. But basically, you um, knit the button band right along with the rest of it, which uh, we love because then it means less finishing work. Uh, and I already placed buttonholes in the button band and uh, marked where I will put in the buttons, which will be 
these pretty wooden buttons. These are uh, Favo Valley Woodworking. Um, and this is, they make uh, buttons out of different types of wood. This is type, uh, this is made of, out of maple. And I just love the look of them. I picked them up in one of my local yarn shops in Brooklyn General, which I absolutely love. Uh, and I think this will look very cute and cottage corsy together. Uh, I can't wait for a more cottage corsy autumn. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to put these in and put the whole cardigan together. Now the cardigan, I will get up for you to see. I am about here. You can see that the armholes, I think especially here where I picked up just with, um, where I put the stitches on hold just with scrap yarn, you can see that it hits pretty deep. Uh, that is meant to be that way. So I think you join under the arms or like you split for the sleeves, you take the, the um, stitches for the armholes off your needles pretty late. Uh, because the armholes are meant to be pretty deep and um, then you don't have a lot of knitting left to do until you reach the bottom hem because the original pattern is a bit more cropped and I really want a slouchy but cropped cardigan so I actually I think I only have a little bit over yeah this is how long it actually is it's just bunched up now I think I'm gonna do about this much more of stockinette and then I'll switch over to the ribbing and uh, place also the sixth buttonhole in the ribbing. Um, what else do I have to say? This is very pleasant to knit. I mean obviously it involves a lot of purling because you never join in the round. That's why I'm looking forward to the sleeves because then I can do some easy in the round knitting. But it's very pleasant to knit with this yarn. I love the color and every time I see this cardigan it just makes me very happy because it has such a sunflower, sunshiny color. I also have to say, well this is attached to me, I love these needle stoppers that I picked up. Um, when I was in New Haven, forgot the name, I will see if I can find the name of the creator of these below and yeah, just link them in the, in the info box. But I really love how these look like and they fit so well um, and just make this into my cottage, sunflower, or whatever uh, project. I will take it off because it is much too warm. But yeah, at the moment I'm really enjoying it. Um, I should also say I'm knitting a size 3 which will give me about 20 centimeters of positive ease. So that will mean that it's quite slouchy which uh, I think is very nice for a cardigan. Uh, and I hope to be able to show you this one in the next episode finished. Um, I was knitting a lot on this last week when we were traveling because I knew it was going to be a bit colder in Maine so that um, I knew I was going to feel more like autumn vibes and colors so I took this one as my primary project with me and got a lot of it done there. Uh, now after we got back the projects that I had left behind the next one which I'm going to talk to you about in a minute feels kind of new again so I'm focusing on that one more right now but yeah I kind of like um, switching up which projects I prioritize because then that gives me a kind of new motivation to make more progress uh, and keeps me from passing on new things so this way things kind of stay exciting um, but yeah that's the cottage cardigan so far I really enjoy it, but I'm also really looking forward to whenever I wrap up the body to do knitting in the rounds on the sleeves and then probably pick also another knitting in the round project next. And I, I, I notice always that I really gravitate towards cardigans because I find them so nice to wear. Um, and yeah, but I can't knit more cardigans. Like, yeah, I can't knit two cardigans in a row because I do get a bit... Uh, bothered by all the purling. I, I find purling okay, but after a while I want to have a break from it, but I guess we all kind of do somehow. Um, so yeah, that's the cottage cardigan. And I will just pop the, all of this back into the bag so I don't get it messed up with all my other projects. The next 
project I want to talk about is one that you haven't seen here before. Uh, it is one that I mentioned in my summer top roundup as something I would like to cast on at the very end of summer because it would be a transitional piece. And then when I recorded that video, I went like an hour later, I went to the yarn shop, bought the yarn for it and cast on. So clearly don't, don't hold, <laughs> I shouldn't be held to my word. Um, but I'm enjoying this one a lot. So I'm at a bit of an awkward stage to show this, but um, I'll still go ahead. This is the Tonight Top by Lily Kate Franz. And it, I mean, I can't show you super much because it's a black yarn, so that's always probably not the best to show of a garment, but um, it's a tank top with that is meant to have a um, mock neck or turtleneck, however long you want to make it, color. It's sleeveless um, and it's knit top down in fingering weight yarn. And um, I love the pattern photos of this top. I've been wanting to make a top by this designer for a long time now. And this one, I just absolutely fell in love with it because it looks like something very classy and um, very easy to combine, very easy to dress up also. And I especially loved the black sample that she made. So I wanted to make one for myself as well. And I received some very good news. I think I cast this on like three weeks ago uh, and wanted to reward myself. So that's why <laughs> I got kind of spontaneous with it. So this pattern, you can see that I already joined uh, under the arms. Again, not sure how easy it is to show things uh, in like yarn. Um, if I see that the footage is not very good, I'll try to film it separately. But this top is knit in fingering weight. Um, so another tiny needle project. Here we are again. I should I should pick more DK weight projects for summer because I'm taking ages to make every one of them. But I always love the outcome, so I think it's okay. Um, yeah, this is made in fingering weight yarn. Uh, I am using Cascade Heritage Silk uh, in the colorway, surprise, surprise, uh, real black. And this is what the cake looks like. This is, I believe, an 80% superwash merino, 20% silk blend. Um, in the original pattern, she uses a quite luxurious wool as well. Uh, I think with Falkland wool and silk. I also saw that one in my local yarn shop, but it was pretty pricey and I thought I wanted to try this Cascade Heritage silk. Um, so I think, yeah, it's very nice. The silk shines a little bit. I'm a bit concerned that it will pill quite a bit because I already see some little fluff showing up um, on the knit object, but I think because it's black, uh, it's not super obvious right now. So I'm knitting this on 3.25 millimeter needles. You can see that I joined here in the round, but the reason that I'm also holding up this needle the whole time is that I'm working on the armholes right now. The armholes have a really pretty finish that is um, basically double knitting all around, which I told you about my I-cord marathon. If you think I-cord is slow, then try double knitting. It's even slower. Probably you know this already if you've done double knitting before, but um, Basically, I'm making this double knit edge. I already finished it on this one side. I'll try to get closer so you can see it. So, is it visible? Oh, maybe like this. So it has a very pretty finish. This is what the inside looks like. Outside. Here at the top, maybe you can see it a bit better. So it has double knitting all around. And I'm doing the other armhole right now. The reason that I'm doing this now is A, I was knitting in the round for quite a bit and I thought if I would get to the bottom of the top and then have to pick up stitches for the both armholes and for the collar, do double knitting, do ribbing, all of the things that I don't love so much, um, uh, this top would get finished slower, so I wanted to work on the armholes. Also, I found the armholes to be quite deep when I tried it on. And I wanted to see if the double knitting pulls them in a little bit more. Now, with the armhole that I have finished, it did pull it in quite nicely. I mean, obviously, no one wants 
too tight armholes uh, on a tank top because it's just uncomfortable, but also I don't want them gaping and uh, showing off my bra. Um, but this one, the um, double knitting pulls them in quite nicely, so I, yeah, it calmed me down so that I don't have to rip back and change um, before joining in the round. Of course, blocking might still stretch it out again a bit, I don't know, but so far I'll just roll with it. Um, yeah, I'm doing the double knitting on this other side now. I do have to say I find it quite addicting once I get into it because it's a very, uh, it's varied enough for me to keep me entertained, but also simple enough to be automatic that I don't have to double check um, what to do next all the time. There is just one slightly more uh, tricky part, which is where you put in short rows so that when you when the um, edge bends kind of at the front of your armpit and at the back of your armpit, that the double knitting makes a nice curve. And that for that you have to fiddle around a little bit, but it's very well explained um, and wasn't too hard to do. I don't know how neat it looks in the end. I do think in my case you can see it a little bit, but I'm hoping that it'll block out. And if not, no one, I'm not gonna walk around like this showing off the short rows, right? So it's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm loving this pattern. Um, I also love that, well, last thing I'll try to finish, uh, to show you with the black. Uh, it has this really cool detail that looks almost like a false, like faux seam or something, um, and makes the whole garment look even more polished, I think. So I love all these small details that, uh, the designer has put into this pattern to make it just that extra little bit more special. Um, so highly appreciate it, very much enjoy it. I've been doing this double knitting for the past days um, and I'm looking forward to get back into my in the round knitting. This is my second ball of yarn. The pattern suggests uh, for my size 200 grams, so I should be fine with the 200 grams that I bought. And I am knitting size three, which also gives me about three centimeters of positive ease. Um, that's more or less all that I have to say about this. Also, I hope this one will be finished by the next podcast episode because I feel like I'm doing the um, most tedious part of the finishing right now. I hope that I'm going to be done with the double knitting maybe tomorrow so I can uh, continue merrily making my way along to the bottom hem. And then there won't be too much work left. Also really looking forward to have this so I can wear it um, to out to dinner or something. Because it's merino, I guess it's too warm at the moment to wear during the day, but I hope, yeah, for other occasions that it will be nice to wear. So these are the two projects that I'm prioritizing at the moment. Um, I, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this with my acquisitions as well, but I'm going back and forth the whole time with how much summer knitting I still want to do and when to switch over into autumn. Um, but yeah, before I get into that and my acquisitions, let me show you my last project. This is one that you will have seen before. Um, not in the last episode because then I hadn't made any progress on it, but now I picked it back up. And these are the red radish socks. These are by Stone Knits. Uh, Stone Knits has very cool uh, color work sock patterns and these were, there are a million that I want to try. But this is the first one that I decided to try out. I have the first sock already done. Um, this one I did show you in a previous episode, but I needed some a bit of a break from it um, before casting on the second one. But here I am. I worked on this mostly also when we were traveling last week because I did feel like doing some color work again. And I really love um, how it looks like. You can see that uh, it's a bit bumpy here. My floats don't look too bad, so I hope this will just even out with blocking. Um, this is also my first uh, proper kind of color work project, so I am still new to figuring out how to tension the work properly, but I have to say it is getting easier the more I do it, and I also kind of picked up the um, holding one color in my right hand and one in the left hand so that I do English and continental knitting in parallel so I don't have to drop the colors all the time. Uh, and that's kind of fun as well. Although I can't do it for very long because I usually knit English style 
Uh, so whenever I do continental style knitting, I, my hand feels a bit more tense because I'm not as used to it. So yeah, but this, this one doesn't have too many rows of color work, obviously. So it's kind of fine. Now I'm just doing my, I planted the radishes uh, and I'm just going around and around and I think I'll have to do the heel flap and gusset soon. Um, the yarns that I'm using for this are, I'll pick them all up to show them to you. So these are all the yarns that I'm using. This one is Cascade Heritage Sock Yarn in Limestone. This is a merino nylon blend. And that's obviously what I'm using as the background. Then we have the brown is John Arben Exmoor Sock. These all are John Arben Exmoor Sock. I have, a, I have a label here also. That's the really cool, the cool label that they have. I'm showing it the wrong way around. There we go. So John Arben Exmoor Sock. And the colorways are Fuzz Pig for the brown, Aggie, Aggie for the green, and Haggles for the red. So these are the three colors, and this is what they look like. I love how vibrant the red is. Um, this sock yarn is a bit of a different fiber blend, so it has 60% Exmoor Blueface Superwash, 20% Corydale, 10% Svartbless, and then 10% Nylon. Uh, so it has a lower nylon content than the other one and uh, a blend of three different sheep. I It is much more rustic than the um, Merino, which I also notice when knitting. So I feel like it has less bounce than the Merino, so it does get a little bit harder on my hands. Um, when I knit on it for a while, which I think also contributed to me taking some time before casting on this sock. So I knit the first sock, so this is gonna be a, a gift, and I knit them um, with the largest circumference, with, what is it, 72 stitches uh, on 2.25 millimeter needles, and I usually knit with much fewer stitches for myself. So this also just, felt like it went on for ages because I had to make the foot longer obviously and the circumference is much bigger and then also the wool is less smooth to knit with than the merino or other um, wools that I have knit socks with before. But overall I'm definitely also enjoying it um, but it's still the first time that I have kind of second sock syndrome so yeah. Now because I gave it a little bit of a break though I'm um, I'm a bit more motivated to do this again and have it as my side project, especially now that I've finished the color work. I have a very long section of just brown uh, left, so I can just use this as my kind of commute driving around the city project. Um, yeah, not sure if these ones will be finished by the next episode because they are not my priority right now uh, because they're extremely warm because of the blend and also because of the color work in some parts of the sock you essentially have two layers of wool so they are not a priority but I hope that I can make my way slowly through them um, and yeah I also have another sock open sock project where I made the first sock but not the second but this one also I'm taking a short break from uh, I showed this in my last episode and I will hopefully get to the second sock once I finish these uh, red radish socks Definitely enjoy the color work, but um, I think the next time I make color work socks, I might use uh, softer yarn again, just to make it a little bit more enjoyable for my hands. All right, Oof, now I'm getting actually warm with uh, with this t-shirt, but uh, I have I don't have so much more left to tell you, except I do want to get to some acquisitions that I have here. I ordered needles. Uh, if you've seen my last vlog, you will have seen me talk about this. Uh, I thought I lost some of my interchangeable needle tips and ordered um, a replacement and then found the ones that I thought I'd lost again. So clearly I didn't really order them. Well, now I just have two, but because uh, I wanted to also get some yarn uh, with my order, I picked up these bowls of Knitting for Olive 
merino. Uh, and this is the colorway burnt orange. I picked up three balls uh, with which I want to make the twisted loops top by other loops, which is a very pretty sleeveless tank top um, with all over very broad like rib um, and a cable detail in the front. I talked about this one in my summer pattern video as well. And it's one that I definitely want to make because uh, it's pretty. I want to give cabling a go. And this one has very, very low um, cable involvement. I don't know. There's not so much cabling involved. Um, so I think it's a good start, uh, a good way to try it out. And this color will transition me very well into autumn. I'm not going to talk much more about it here because I did talk about it uh, previously in the vlog. Um, and then the other yarn that I got is this absolutely gorgeous uh, sock set from Explorer Knits and Fibers. It's the Denali sock, which is a blend of 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. So this is part of this very gorgeous pre-order that um, Explorer Knits and Fibers and Red Door Fibers did together for their Emily Henry book cover inspired yarns. Um, all of the colorways were stunning and because Emily Henry is one of my favorite authors I knew I wanted to get something from the pre-order but didn't um, want to get too much because of reasons I'll go into in my um, kitten chat that I'm planning to film soon. So I just went for the one, the skein of yarn uh, that refers to my absolute favorite book which is Bee Treat. Hold on, let me get it. So, Bee Treat by Emily Henry um, came out in 2020. I read it pretty much like three weeks after. No, no. Actually, I read it when I when it came out. Loved it. Have reread it about twice or maybe three times since. Um, and sometimes while I'm writing and I need to get into the writing mood, I also just love to dip in and out of scenes um, to get my brain going and to get the words flowing it helps she writes super super nicely so that's always um very nice and bee treat this is the sock set um you can see that it has a 100 gram skein and a 20 gram skein and the 20 gram skein obviously is related to the spine um so i'm really looking forward to make a beach read related sock out of this. I think I'm gonna skip my classic vanilla sock um, this time maybe and look for some slightly more exciting stitch pattern or at least add some rib or something, I don't know. Uh, but I'm very much looking forward to work with this and have a sock that reminds me of my favorite book. Um, so yeah, this was this was very nice. This arrived this weekend, um, this past weekend. Flock Fiber Fe Festival happened in Seattle and seeing um, everyone's stories and posts of the people that went there definitely had me experience quite a bit of FOMO. So when this arrived, um, it sort of cheered me up a little or, or made me feel less FOMO because this was a very highly anticipated um, pre-order for me. So these are the two acquisitions that I had in the last weeks. Well, actually... I mean, I didn't even mention it because I'm already knitting with it, but technically the black yarn for the Tonight Club is also an acquisition. Just, again, I'm already working with it, so I kind of forgot about it. Um, yes, so as I said, I'm a bit unsure right now how to proceed with my knitting because of autumn coming up. Um, I definitely already feel like I would like to make autumn knits just because I don't know I look at all these like nice like orange brown red tones and I really want to cast on something really autumnal um, in those warm colors which are always a bit of a hit and miss for me because beiges and browns are not naturally my colors I like looking at them but I don't really own any clothing in brown or beige for that matter either because uh, they often make me look quite washed out so I have to find very specific tones that work for me. But I am very um, excited to knit for autumn, also knit with more wools again after 
knitting with silk um, slightly larger needle projects because the fingering weight as nice as it is and as nice as the finished garments are they also take a lot of time uh, but then again it's only August it's still very warm here in New York City so it's not like I would be able to wear any autumnal projects anytime soon anyways um, and I'm also figuring that autumn and winter and the colder season will be long enough and um, soon enough I'll also be wishing for warmer weather again so might as well make use of the warmer weather now. So I'm not entirely sure what I'll knit next. Um, I think my combination of what, uh, basically what I'm working on right now, so like a tank top plus a cardigan that is good for the transitional season, maybe I'll try to stick to that combination so I have one more summer appropriate and one more transitional piece on the needles, um, maybe that's a good combination and then depending on how the weather changes I can just switch it up and knit on whatever I feel like. Let's see, I will wait with casting on new things until I, I have uh, at least one of my projects finished, so I still have some time to think about it. Um, yeah, and apart from that, uh, I announced it in the last video already, I'm planning to, well announced, uh, planning to film a knit and chat. Uh, next, so if you have any questions that you want me to answer, knitting related, writing related, book related, life related, whatever, uh, drop them in the comments down below. I will also put up a sticker on Instagram soon. My Instagram profile is also linked down below uh, along with information about all the patterns that I talked about today. And um, yeah, I'm curious if you well, if you're still here, <laughs> I'm curious if how you're going to proceed from now on, if you kind of are wrapping up the summer knitting season already, or if you're still full on in your summer patterns. Um, just let me know, because I'm curious about how everyone else handles this. Granted, obviously, that you're in the Northern Hemisphere, because in the Southern Hemisphere, you're going to be transitioning into spring now. So um, again, still let me know then if you're knitting wintry or more spring appropriate projects. Um, what else? Do I have anything else to talk about? I also want to make a book-related video. I actually tried to film book-related, or I did film book-related videos before to include them in vlogs, but they always ended up being too long to add into the vlog, so I might um, make a funny little cut-up, round-up of book reviews video with all the clips that I didn't get to use um, because I do want to talk a little bit more about books because I am reading a lot right now. Um, maybe I can show you the one that the book that I just started. So in line with my um, wish for more autumn appropriate wear and weather, um, I started this book that I picked up from the library. Um, my hold finally came in. This is The Serpent and the Wings of Night by the author Carissa Broadbent. I don't know too much about what's happening in here except that it's a fantasy book set in a different world where a human basically grows up surrounded by vampires uh, and in this world she's a bit of a kind of like weak link but um, she's daughter or like adopted daughter to the king of this vampire family and I think there's some sort of tournament or game or something going on that she will participate in. It sounds like something I would have read when I was 13 or 14, um, which, no shame on that. I loved reading about vampires. I had my twilight phase, as I guess a lot of us had. Um, and I'm kind of ready for vampires to make a comeback because I read, I don't know, I just like them as creatures. I find that they disappeared um, in an undeserved manner after the twilight hype, and I'm ready for them to come back. So. Uh, this book came out earlier this year, so I'm hoping this is a sign for vampires making their comeback. I think there's also one or two romances that are coming out this autumn that feature vampires, like one that has is living where the main character, her roommate, turns out to be a vampire, I think, something like that. So I'm, I'm ready for vampires to make their comeback. I'm only about two chapters in. Um, it's already giving me the dark romantic vibes that I was looking for. So I'll keep you updated on this and hopefully feature this book in my book roundup video as well. Um, so whenever that comes out, uh, you can see my thoughts there. Yeah, as I said, I'm not working right now, so I have uh, lots of time to write and knit and read and think about videos I want to make. Um, and I want to make 
uh, most use of that time period in my life because I'm not sure when it will ever come back. I do have a job lined up um, that will, yeah, will <laughs> be uh, going on for longer from October on. So it's really more like a summer holiday right now. Um, I'm happy that I'm done with looking for work because applications are draining and they take up a lot of time and they are frustrating especially if um, you don't hear back from companies or such uh, so I'm really glad that that part is over that I know what's coming ahead it's very exciting um, I'm going to talk about it more in my knit and chat because I will talk about many other things there as well and I feel like I need a little bit of time to go into it uh, but yeah um, interesting changes are ahead. Uh, let me say that. <laughs> and with that, uh, I'll wrap up this video actually, because it's already getting quite long. Um, thank you as always for watching, for being here, for hanging out with me in the comments. That's always a lot of fun. I always love uh, seeing some of you who comment on every video or many videos come back and just get, I don't know, updates from you. It feels like a little um, community hangout. So that's quite fun. Again, Future videos will probably be book related, book review, knit and chat, um, and let's see what else I come up with. If you have any wishes for videos, also please comment them down below, um, and then I can see what I can do. And until then, I hope you are having a wonderful day. If you like this video, give me a like down below or subscribe if you haven't yet, so you get updated about all the videos as they come out. And uh, I will see you soon in another video and have a good rest of your day.